Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. Here today with Miss Kara Petro. Kara, what exactly is it we're trying to do today, huh? Well, I am running for district court judge over the Division II um, Department to all of Garland County. And what exactly does that do? Is that like a family court or a civil case or what? No, it is a a criminal court for misdemeanors. So anything from shoplifting, DWI, theft property under a thousand. And then the felony cases all originate there. So you find probable cause and you set a bond, but then they all go to circuit court where I'm I'm a judge in circuit court right now, but the position I'm running for is district court. It also does um, small claims for civil and it also does orders of protections, unlawful detainers, uh, mental commitments, things like that. Wow. You know, the time I've spent in court, and I don't mean that way, but the time where I've been either interviewing or following people or whatever, the stories are endless. Is that fair? Yes. It's a lot of everyone has a reason why they're there. So a lot of it is docket management to try to, you know, get the interesting stuff out and find out what it is we need to assess, but keep it moving. It's not exactly Judge Judy, is it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so so what led you to run for this position? Why, why do you want to do that? Um, I was chief deputy prosecuting attorney prior to being a judge. Um, I've spent my entire career doing public service and helping people. And when this opportunity arose, it was just a larger scale way to give back to my community and help. And I love being in the courtroom. It's my happiest place. And I love giving back to my community. So it's a perfect fit. So a good buddy of mine is Mike Rainwater, who I'm sure you know, uh, that yes. we see him on TV all the time. And uh, I came home one day and my, my wife said, why are you so flustered? And I said, well, I, because I've realized that I don't like to argue at all. And Mike loves <laughs> to argue. Every attorney I know just lo- they love it. It's, you know, I think there's an argue, there's conflict. No, no, they, they just like to argue about things, right? Right. It's no conflict. We just can't help ourselves. We love to have, to have debates. And then we're like best friends afterwards. We just love to argue. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and that's what I didn't understand. I'm like, well, why is he all on me? What is going on? Well, we're still buddies. What's up? Uh, tell me more. How did you get here? How did you, how did you, uh, I mean, you're a local girl, I assume, right? Yes. Local girl. I grew up in West Garland County. I um, went to like Hamilton school from kindergarten until graduation. And I, um, youngest of six, which is probably where I got that start in arguing. And then I went to school at UCA for my bachelor's in English and political science, graduated there on the president's list. And then I went on to law school in Fayetteville, which I really enjoyed Fayetteville, but I was homesick, ready to get back home. So as soon as I graduated, I came back here, studied for the bar here, passed the bar, 
I did private practice for a little over a year. And then the prosecutor's office reached out to my boss and asked if it be, would be okay for me to come work for them. They really wanted me to come work for them. And we talked about it and um, he said that I should do it because you get more experience as a prosecutor. Um, in one year, you'll have 10 times experience of any other attorney because you just are always on trial, always in the courtroom. It's great for litigation experience. It's just one year's worth every 10 as a, you know, civil is what we discussed. So he said I could come back after I did it for six months to a year, um, but it will get me great experience. Well, I went there and I fell in love with being a prosecutor. I fell in love with helping people. Um, it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life. And I had no desire to go back to private practice. So I did about five months as a prosecutor in district court, which is the position I'm running for as judge. And right. that's, like I said, the misdemeanors and stuff. Um, I was promoted after about five months to circuit court where I did a general crime docket from anywhere from theft of property, drug cases, all felony to aggravated robbery. Well, we quickly realized um, that the children were very comfortable with me. I was younger. I was 26 at the time. Um, and they just really opened up to me, felt comfortable with me. And so I started doing violent crimes against children. And that was mm. where my heart was. It was very difficult, very emotional, but just so fulfilling and just heartbreaking at the same time, but fulfilling. And as the time went on, um, I do, started doing more and more violent crimes, adult rapes, murders. Um, and then the chief deputy prosecuting attorney, which was Joe Graham at the time, went on to be a district court judge. There's two district court judge positions. I'm not running against Judge Graham, but um, okay. he went on in 2019. And so I took his spot as chief deputy prosecuting attorney. And so at that point in time, my role expanded to where I supervised the other attorneys. I went on search warrants with law enforcement, was on call with law enforcement all the time, um, handled you know murder scenes, and then did the most serious of the serious murders. Uh, over the course of my career as a prosecutor, I obtained 14 life sentences. I obtained the death penalty, more large term of years sentences than I know how to count. Um, I prosecuted, um, you know, the Eric Reed case where he killed his wife and his daughter. And we, um, as a part of that team, and we obtained the death penalty. I also obtained um, two consecutive life sentences on Kayvon Ward uh, for the murder of Officer Brent Scrimshire and the aggravated assault of Officer Anthony Larkin. Um, so when Judge Hernsberger, who's the circuit court judge in Division 4, and again, Garland County, when she was ready to retire, uh, she recommended that I take her place. And so that was uh, May of this last year. And she wrote a letter to the governor asking that I take her place. Um, every single Garland County state representative also wrote a letter asking that I take her place. Senator Matt McKees and then a letter asking that I take Judge Hernsberger's place. Uh, the county judge, Cheryl Mahoney, and um, city manager, Bill Burrow. All of them asked that I take over for Judge Hernsberger. So we had a long vetting process over the summer, and um, I took office in July of last year as the circuit court judge. Now, since the governor appointed me to that position, I can't run for that position, and that term ends December 31st of this year. And so this district court judge um, position that I'm running for begins January 1st of next year, so it actually would be a seamless transition, and um, it's just a perfect fit for me, honestly. I have to make note here, Diane and I were driving past um, a police officer, and I actually did a show about this one day, and I've turned it into a radio show, too. Um, we were driving past, a police officer had pulled a lady over on the side of the road, and she was giving him the what for. I mean, she was just letting him have it. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes things just come out of your mouth, and Diane said, you couldn't pay me to do that. <laughs> and I, I thought, as you were telling these stories, Oh, my Lord, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that you could pay me to do this, Kara. But at the same time, it has your heart and your passion. And thank you that somebody does it. And thank you that somebody qualified wants to do it. Does it not take a troll on you? It does. You just have to take care of yourself, too. Um, it's easy to get lost in it. And it's easy yeah. to have tunnel vision with it because you just get so focused in on making a difference and not failing and making sure that everyone is protected and you just don't want to drop the ball on anything. Um, it's a lot of pressure, but yeah. it's a calling for sure. And I just feel blessed that it's something that I have so much meaning in my life for. Um, and I just work on it every day. Well, tell me how we, we would help you in this. When's the election? What do we do? How's the process? Do I have to be a Republican or a Democrat? What do I do? <laughs> 
Okay, so it's a nonpartisan race. Uh, when you run for judge, they're, you know, Republican, Democrat, none of that stuff matters. It shouldn't matter. Um, can't even tell you if I'm a Republican or a Democrat. So it's strictly nonpartisan. And again, it's a criminal, a misdemeanor criminal, and it's small claims court. So that doesn't really play much of a role at all, actually. Sure. Um, so, but it, it is over in March. So we don't go to November. So I need you all to get out and vote. <laughs> and I need you to, uh, I would really appreciate you voting for me. I hope you'll go to my website that was up here and research me and look at articles of previous things that I've done um, as a prosecutor and as a judge. There's, you know, extensive experience and lots of things to to look up if you just google my name in garland county um, but early voting is february 20th and it goes on until election day which is going to be on tuesday uh, march 5th so please research me and please uh, vote for me so is that a special election that's called or is this just when the, the were we doing it with the primaries or whatever um, we just do it with the primaries. If I had more than one opponent um, and didn't win by over 50 percent, then it could go to November. But I only have one person running against me. So we'll be OK. okay. And and so it's March the 5th, March the 5th. But you can you start voting as early as February the 20th. Is that right? That is correct. I'm double checking now. I'm just making because uh, <laughs> yeah, I said it so many times. Yes. March 5th is election day. <laughs> March 5th. Well, we will certainly promote that on the website. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for sharing. I know we had trouble just lining our schedules up. You're a busy gal. Who knew, right? Right. I'm always in court or getting ready for something at the campaign, but I'm I'm loving every minute of it. Thank you for well, having me. Kara, I, I can tell you from the depths of my soul, thank you for what you do. I, like I said, I don't think you could pay me to do it, but I, it's so important to have somebody that you really trust and that has the right heart, if that makes sense, to do that job. Well, I can tell you, you're very welcome, and it is my heart. It's my passion. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Kara. Thank you. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.